Before we get started tonight, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, on another episode here in Fast Break for Ice Force Radio, I want to talk to y'all about the last eight years of the company. For the last eight years, Ice Force Radio has been bringing amazing contact raging for interviewing legendary athletes to build and tailor man shows dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. All the while, we've been continuing by the fans, for the fans, and with your help, we're ready to take the next step. When you go to our website, IceForceRadio.com, you'll see our Patreon link with five different tiers. The first one starting at just five dollars a month. This donation gets you shout outs on our thirty-two of our shows. Higher tiers include Ice Force Radio merchandise, Aztec South Podcasting University, and even a chance to be featured on a segment of our flagship show, The Defining Moment. Thank you all very much for contributing to make Ice Force Radio your direct feed for all his sports. I want to shout out to our four Patreon members: Barry Rays, Marcus Lowe's Great, Key to the Gate, and Anonymous. Thank you all for making. Our eighth anniversary special, and here's more many, many more mirrors to come. On to the show. On tonight's show, we discuss NBA playoff action from the play-in to the games going on currently right now. What does the future hold for the New Orleans Pelicans? After their loss to the OKC Thunder this past week, a lot of questions surrounding the franchise, mainly Zion Williamson. What the future holds for him and that franchise? Plus, the Lakers get a big win today against the Memphis Grizzlies. Can it upset the, upset Memphis in the first round? As we speak right now, Giannis is out with a back injury. Does that affect that series against the Miami Heat? Who part who wants revenge from last year? Plus, we'll discuss that and much more, including Mikey Williams, Star Town to uh High School Phenom, recently got arrested in San Diego, we'll discuss that, and much more here for Fast Break for I Sports Radio, your direct free for all sports, and you're welcome to join us. And join us as you shout out tonight, lots to talk about, lots to get into tonight, lots to deep dive into the playoffs and all that stuff, predictions. I know we weren't here last week, but we're here now. We had a little week off for of Easter. D Lock, how you doing tonight, sir? Everything is going pretty well, man. Um, a lot of shocking things happened. Now that the playoffs have started, this is the best time of the NBA season. Yes, the best time of the NBA season. The best time, you know, all the BS is aside and all that. The games are rolling. Everything else, all the pretenders are out the way. Now it's just straight basketball. But let's circle back a few days ago, D Log, and let's go back to. I, I'm going to go here. Wednesday night. Well, Tuesday night, excuse me. What are your thoughts? Uh, We'll just lump this all together. What are your thoughts of the play-in games that happened on Tuesday and Wednesday? What are your thoughts on that? And, you know, were you surprised by the outcomes of those matchups? Well, for me... um... I think there was some. I, think, I thought there was some uh, good matchups. Uh, the biggest thing is when I thought that going into it, I thought the Lakers were going to have. Remember, at some point, the Lakers were 
not going to be in the play-in. You know, they basically were in a good spot and then ended, ended up having to play in the play-in. So, you know, that matchup against uh, Timberwolves, which wasn't the full Timberwolves team, being the fact that Rudy Gobert just had an incident with Kyle Anderson. Yep. The team ended up suspending him. So you've seen a uh, hell of a play, you know, hell of a game by Carl Anthony Towns, which we rarely see. Uh, but that game uh, was one to watch. Uh, LeBron basically made the game interesting. I mean, he shot pretty decent, didn't turn the ball over. So uh, that game kept going back and forth. You know, Dennis Schroeder had a hit a clutch three-pointer. You know, I remember at the end, we thought the game was over then. And then Anthony Davis does a move that <laughs> many have been shocked for him to do, being the fact that he's made made some similar, I believe, like this happened earlier in the season. Uh, Fouls Conley uh, at, at three point, you know, three point line, but just being the last play of the game. Uh, now to make even more drama with this, uh, the first shot that Conley takes at the free throw line, he basically touches the top of the rim and just falls in. Yeah, that was... <laughs> so, yeah, that made it hell. If you didn't, you know what I'm saying, if you ain't had your popcorn, then I'm pretty sure that made it very interesting at that point. So, uh, basically, kind of made those three, went to overtime, and, you know, the Lakers found a way to get the victory in that, uh, which was a hell of a game. Um, Miami and Atlanta. I mean, we these two teams, you know, we remember... You know, the bubble Miami went to the NBA Finals. Uh, and we remember Atlanta giving Philadelphia 76ers issues with Ben Simmons there and Joel B. you know. So we know that these two teams can play pretty well, you know, in the playoffs. And for them to meet in the, in the play-in tournament was just a shocker, you know, alone. Uh, we were definitely were expecting more for both of these teams. Um, I know I definitely, I definitely was uh, big time. So uh, for me, uh, this was already going to be a hell of a matchup going into it. Uh, but Trey Young just had a hell of a game uh, against them. Not only did he have one, but Kyle Lowry had one of those, you know, every now and then games where he has a great game and he disappears. Uh, so the Hawks won that game, um, and I felt like. Bam couldn't do anything. You know, Clint Capella on UK on UK Congo or Congo in the game that he won as well. They kind of were doing whatever they wanted at Miami. Uh, so knowing that, you know, Hawks ended up advancing going to play Boston. Lakers already solidified their spot. Heat and Miami got to play again, being the fact that see what happened between Chicago and Toronto. Uh, you know, Zach Levine comes alive the third quarter in that Toronto and Bulls game. Uh, I think also uh, DeRozan's daughter played a huge part in that game, screaming at the free throw line because uh, the Raptors shot terrible at the free throw line. I mean, terrible. They got no shooters. Uh, yeah. They, for some reason, they just could not make anything at the free throw line. But I think, you know, kudos to DeMar DeRozan's daughter for screaming at every shot. I'm pretty sure that was some kind of distraction. The Bulls took that one, bumped Toronto out, and then you got OKC in New Orleans. I left this one last for a reason. New Orleans is one of the better teams in the West. And let me say this next word, every letter capital. Okay. Word, with. Uh-huh. W-I-T-H, with Zion. The Pelicans are one of the better teams in the West. But the problem is, Zion is not playing. So now they're in the play. Um, OKC, we know it's going to be a young and up-and-coming team. They got a hell of a rookie out of Jalen Williams. Williams. Yes. Paris would be great. Uh, I think that, you know, that was a sleeper pick, clearly. Um, This team is going to be one to watch for in the future. If it was me, I would trade all the damn picks for Victor. If I was them, but that's a different conversation for a different day. Uh, but they outlast the Pel- the okay, they outlast the Pelicans to end up going to play Minnesota. Uh, now you got the Bulls and the Heat. 
and in my opinion, uh, the Heat just, Jimmy Butler was just Jimmy Butler. You know, he turns with Jimmy Buckets, and when he does that, there's no stopping him. Um, we're kind of seeing that today as well. Uh, when Jimmy Butler turns it on, there's no there's no stopping him. The thing is, can he continue to do that? But he does that against the Bulls. Struess has a hell of a game, which I knew he was going to play like that, being the fact that he had a hell of a game against the Bulls earlier in the season. They had, at outlast the Heat, get a playoff spot against Milwaukee, and OKC loses, gets blown out by Minnesota. And Minnesota makes it to the playoffs. So, uh, for me, I think that the playing tournament is, is great because you give these teams that, you know, we are seeing that we expect to be really good and their respective conferences barely make it. And they show that they can play pretty well in the playoffs get an opportunity. Uh, but the playing tournament is one great thing to have, and I think it showed it uh, prior to the playoffs starting. Uh, just real quick for me. You know, Hawks re- look really good against the Heat on that uh, Tuesday match. They look really good. Uh, I can't front on that. You know, uh, they got good uh, games out of... Um, I'll make sure I get his name right. Um, o- Congo. Good game for him off the bench. Uh, Sadiq Bay, he played pretty well. Bodanovich, he has a pretty good couple moments for him as well. Uh, Trey Young, like the Trey Young played pretty well. Capella had 21 rebounds. That was pretty t- a good night for him. And they just got, especially in that um, second half, early in the second half, they were just getting what they want in the paint. And Miami couldn't really stop it. Joe Presentation in the paint, scoring. They just couldn't really stop it. You know, Kyle Lowry had 33 off the bench. But, you know, that wasn't enough. You know, it seemed like at times, like, certain Miami players had open looks, but they just couldn't, you know, you know, just hit the shots. So, you know, my, good job for Atlanta to win that game. Now, do I think they're going to win win a game against Boston? Hell no. I think they might you look at them getting swept. And with the rumors of Trey Young, maybe on a trade block, whatever. I don't know which way this Atlanta team is going to go. And, you know, I thought maybe you could do like a semi-reset. But thing is, we talked, you know, this happened around March Madness. They gave a contract extension to uh, Bodanovich for $65 million. And a guy who really... Over the past few years, we and we talked about it on this show that okay, this guy can really do something for this team, but he just really hasn't been healthy to really contribute like that. So I'm trying to see since his time in Atlanta, D. Lock Bogdanovich, his first year. 44 games, 27 starts in 2020-2021 season. 21-22 season, 63 games played, 27 starts. This year, 54 games played, 9 starts. And the points per game has went down each of those seasons. So I don't get their mindset right there. So I don't know which way they're going to go. We'll see how this, this series shake out in Atlanta. If they get blown out, you mad considering the moves and pieces around. You know, uh, I don't know when Capella's contract ends, but I think you got a cheaper option in you know, Congo. Jalen Johnson looked pretty good. I think it's a guy you can kind of keep around. DeAndre Hunter is a guy I kind of was high on, maybe be a, a solid two-way player at the forward spot, small four and a four. In today's NBA, but he really, really hasn't shown up like I hope that he would. But, you know, to them, they won the game. They made the playoffs. Like I said, they lost Boston. They got the ass. That first half was just like ass kicking against Boston. 
Timberwolves and Lakers, real quick. I didn't know how Minnesota was going to come out and play. I'll be honest with you, D-Log. It's like the Goldberg, Kyle Anderson stuff happened. Me and you were texting all that stuff. And Kyle Anderson said, y'all been kissing his butt, blah, 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 blah. You know, from the jump. I tired of that crap. And you figured that, you know, it'll come out flat. But, you know, they... They play well, it's just the Lakers play this a little bit better. You know? And shout out to, like you said, shout out to Mike Conley. To, uh, the, that pressure was on him to make those three throws. And credit to him, he made all three, but it just wasn't enough. And, you know, credit to the Lakers, they did they held their business. I think the Lakers If you look at it, D-Lock, this match, this series with the Grizzlies was probably like the best outcome for them. And, uh, and the reason I say that, ladies and gentlemen, with Steven Adams and Brandon Clark out, Memphis front court depth is taking a hit. And Jerry Jackson played great today. You know, play great going down to AED, whoever's guarding him or whatever. But what happens when he's going to get in foul trouble? Who are you going to lean on, you know, to guard AD, to guard LeBron in some certain stretches? Who are you going to lean on behind him? And I think that's when you kind of, you know, I mean, I know Memphis is young. You got to, depending on your young people, but I think that's when you kind of got to get that veteran big big man on the market. Who? I don't know. You know, Lakers, you know, they snatched up Tristan Thompson for death pit, uh, reasons. You know, Boogie Cousins out there. You know, I can't think of who, anybody else right now, but you get my point. But good win for the Lakers. You know, stupid foul by Anthony Davis, but they pulled through. Wednesday's matchup, you know, credit to the Bulls. They they came in and did what they had to do. I just think this incarnation in the Bulls has got to be done. They went out Friday. They didn't look particularly good against the Heat, you know, for for certain stretches. I just think, I think Crusoe got a bad call on him in that fourth quarter. But you look at Levine, 0 for 6 for three-point land. Kobe White had some big-time shots. You know, should have played Andre Jordan a little bit more. I just the, this arc, incarnation of the Bulls has got to be done, D-Lock. I think Boost is a free agent after this. DeRozan got one more year. I think Lonzo has another year, one more year, or never or two. But the way he, his situation looking is just like blah. And you extended Levine for reasons. Yeah, that don't look good at all. So it it really don't look good at all. You know, I think Caruso next year is last year his contract. So, if if the Bulls and it, oh, and also they they don't got the draft pick because it goes down to the land on Magic. So, if I was them, play next year, let the chips fall out they may, come trade deadline. If you get a good deal for DeRozan, sell him off for picks wherever you can get. Let Zach Levine, if he want to average 35 points a game, let his little heart do it. And 
see where the chips may fall and see where your uh, draft position will be in next May. That's how, I, if I was the Bulls, that's how I would do things. Because you can't run back. You can't run back this group again like this. You, you really can't. You, you really can't. And then, you know, the Thunder, I think, you know, that, I think they're, they're good where they're at. You know, we didn't see this coming out of them. Um... I think they're good where they at. They're fine. Just gotta let the, those guys develop who they got. I think you could probably upgrade to certain areas and stuff. So I so we'll see what they do in the off season. Do they kind of continue with the young core? Do they kind of upgrade here and there to kind of maybe to push themselves in playoff positioning? Time will tell. They got but they got a lot of draft capital to do a lot of things, and I kind of. It's kind of interesting, you know, that Sam Presti got after all those years with Durant, Westbrook, Harden, Ibaka, you know, throwing uh, Reggie Jackson in there as well, Dennis Schroeder, that he got another group of young guys that who will be talking about down the line that teams don't want to really want to face in the playoffs, how good and young and talented they are. Those don't, ha- don't don't happen to teams very much like this. And Sam Presley got ver- is very lucky man for this fortunate chance. So, you know, OKC got nothing to hang their hat on. Well, I won't say the best for last, D-Lock, before we get to more today's action and yesterday's. The Norris Pelicans. I don't know where everybody's head's at. In the chat, what do y'all think about the Pelicans? Because like D-Lock alluded to, this team is very good when everybody's healthy. I think this team really likes playing for Willie Green. But I have said on Twitter, I have said on this show, That the Pelicans are in a pickle because was on because they jumped the gun on giving him a contract extension. Since they put themselves in a the box, I understand why they did it. But sometimes you gotta let see, see how things pull go through before you, you kind of commit deep. You know, it's like dating, for instance. Got to see things through. Got to see how things go for a good few months before you make a long-term commitment. But other than that, you got to keep your options open. If you think this lady or this man is the one, you got to keep it, you know, keep it bad, keep it committed, make it, dig your heels in, you know, make adjustments, to accommodate that person and just go through life. But with the Pelicans D-Log, I felt like they kind of jumped the gun with the extension with, for Zion. And now you're on the hook for this dude for like $196 million. You got CJ McCollum, you know, having vague comments and stuff like that. I don't know if you're talking about himself, about the injury thing or somebody else. I think you talk about the <laughs> I, So you you got that issue there with a veteran who's been in the league for a very long time, a veteran that a lot of guys respect. I think he's a part of the Players Association, I believe. I think so. So you got that aspect of CJ McCollum. So it's just like, where 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 do we go from here? If you're the Pelicans. Does Zion even want to be there? You know, everybody make cracks about Anthony Davis and street clothes and stuff. But Zion, man, he really hadn't made it, 
really a difference to kind of to be that guy. So I just like what what are we doing here? If you're the Benson family, do you get let let go of David Griffin? Or did, did David Griffin go go to them saying, Well, he's just being hurt and stuff like that? Blah 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 blah. Are they being too like when Al Gentry was there? Were they too cautious? Are they being too cautious with Zion? It's, it's, it's like a, not, a lot of questions we have for him and that franchise. How things been going about going about since he's been been there in New Orleans? Well, hell, what makes it worse is every time before they play this dude, like he having a slam dunk contest. Yeah. And every time they, before they play this man, I hear dunking and everything, but he can't. He can't go out there and play. Like that doesn't help anything. Yeah, th- yeah, it, it, that don't help anything at all for his case. And you talking about a dude that having soft tissue injuries? That he, he has so many t- soft tissue injuries that Mike Vrabel will probably be mad if he has coach him. But if some of y'all patients in football like that, y'all get that reference. But anyways, but 24 games this year, he has played D-Lock. 24 games that Zion has played. 61 the year before. 29, I'm going to turn it back, turn it back. 24 rookie year. 61 uh, the next year. 29 this year. That's not really good, man. That that is not really good. And this one you kind of just threw the money at just very quickly. So let me ask you this before we move on. What 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 happens with Zion this summer? Because that is a go ahead. Because I, I've seen in sports you can you can always sell a sucker on 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 a bag of goods. You know, if Zion want to play in New York, like in the Garden. You can sell the Knicks say, hey, he wants to really be here, blah, 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 blah. Give us back Julius Randle and Obi Toppin and Mitchell Robinson. We'll make it work. S- stuff of that nature. What, what, what does the future hold for Zion in your eyes in New Orleans? Uh, let's see. Let me pull up. His, you know, how Zion is, is what, 22, 23? I, I don't even think he's that old yet, to be honest. He's, tw- yeah, 22. 22? All right, so four years, four, four years, 24 million dollars. Guaranteed 20 million at signing. Um, he's a free agent. Or is this his other deal that he's got? So yeah, so he's got an extension. Um, I'm gonna say that they don't move him. Um, not for me. I would definitely move. That's just you know my mindset. I would definitely say, hey, you know what? Let me call some people. Uh. You know, call some teams, say, look, we got a player right now. You know, definitely somebody that play he's part of your franchise, whatever the case may be. Um, now, I'll be very quiet about it, not necessarily making it known that we're trading him because clearly that would draw less of a, a good package. Um, but I, I don't think they move him. I mean, I think that what happens is they are going to – they're going to keep him. I, I, don't, I don't think they want to give up on that, you know, trading him and saying, well, hey, we got to start over with somebody else. 
one main reason why I say that is he was part of that Anthony Davis deal. You know, that draft, getting those draft picks. Um, and I don't think that they're willing to get off of that now. Um, now, granted, like I said before, with him healthy, they are one of the better teams in the West. I believe they were leading the West when he was playing. Yeah. You know, so they were looking very, very good at some point. But best ability is availability. If you can't be healthy, then it doesn't matter. So to me, um, I think that it is uh, – I think that they don't move him um, just because, like I said, they still think about, well, hey, you know, what we could – what what could have been or what's going to happen. Um, to be honest with you, I think the way is, I think honestly that they moved McCullum before they moved Zion. And the reason why is because I think that, you know, McCullum sees what this team could be. You know, you've seen that Brandon Ingram is, is coming into his own. Uh, they have the roster. It's just the roster of guys that they have, like, you can get more by, you know, moving on from Zion, so uh, I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to stick to trying to keep him, and if so, I think they may have to, they're going to be you know, some possible other moves, uh, but I just, I, I definitely would move. That's just what I think would happen. I mean, I know what he, what he can be. I see what the potential, but it's just if every few games or when he gets in a rhythm, something happens and he disappears for months, like, where are you going? With all that talent, they shouldn't just be making the play in. All that talent on that, ro- on that roster, Trey Murphy, Herbert Jones, uh, even Jose Alvarado, McCullum, Brandon Ingham, Larry Nance, their, their roster is very, very, they have a very good roster. And we talked about it last year. So, for me, um, moving him would seem like the best option. It would be hard to do. I just don't think they do that in New Orleans. I mean, I think that if so, the only way I think that happens is they get the best package that they've seen in a long time because of the potential that he had. Uh, Remember, very similar with Joel Embiid sitting out. Uh, when he started his career, and now look at him now, and maybe that's what they're trying to, you know, hold on to and, and hope. But it just, I mean, with a short, with such a short career, you never know. It just doesn't help, you know. Every as soon as he gets in the rhythm, he's hurt. So I don't think they move him, man. To be honest with you. Um, I would again. I'm I'm all for here. I, like I said, I you know made me a couple calls. I called them teams that are looking for that player that willing to give up have a lot of pieces or picks. Um, but they're not gonna do it, man. It, it'll be hard for them to do that. Before we move on, that contract extension starts in 2023, 2024 season. Starting at $33 million. It ends at the 2028 season with topping out at $44 million. Contract terms if no all NBA, the contract will be worth $193 million. If he, gets, if he makes an all NBA team, he gets the 30% kicker in, and the contract balloons up to $231 million altogether. Well, Excluding tax, all that stuff. But, you know, you get my point. Also, his weight must be less than 295 pounds. Body fat monitored. I mean, it's off from uh, Spot Rack, Spol Rack. So, that's where I got this information from. So, we'll see how that shapes out for him. But moving on to Saturday's action, D Lock. A lot of good games. Well, 
the good games happened later on the afternoon, but the first two, you know, kind of duds. After in the special second half of the Sixers game, first half in the Hawks and Celtics game. What were your thoughts on Saturday's action, and do you see any potential sweeps after watching uh, Saturday's games? Well, I definitely see uh, a possible sweep sweep with uh, Brooklyn and Philly. On my life, Brooklyn did, you know, they came to play, but I think that's going to definitely be a sweep. I just feel like, you know, James Harden uh, and B is going to be too much. And B had somewhat of an off game. Um, It seemed like they were double teaming, but I think eventually that's kind of not going to work too long. Only person that really did a lot of work for Brooklyn was Mikael Bridges. Um, yeah. He's been played pretty decent, but more of a defender. Uh, so I expect for that to be uh, a sweet big time. To be honest with you, that is the only sweep that I see on Saturday. Um, I feel like Atlanta is not a uh, team that's going to – that. I think that's going to be a gentleman sweep. I think Atlanta has enough pieces to where they're going to steal at least one game, possibly in Atlanta. Um, DeJounte Murray had a hell of a game. Trey Young probably shot pretty bad. DeAndre Hunter didn't really do too much. Kind of woke up in the third quarter. Um, as you talked about Bogdanovich, that crew is going to have one of those games. Um, now, granted, we are talking about them going against Boston, but when Atlanta is hitting, they are literally shooting, you know, shooting the lights out if they want to stay hit. I think they're going to have one of those games. Now, I don't see it being a blowout. I just think it would be one of those uh, maybe 110, 111 games, you know, two-point games, something like that, where they'll steal one and then Boston will, uh, will finish it off. Uh, but Boston clearly looks like they can do whatever they want. They had control of that game for the most part. Uh, kind of seemed like they took their foot off the gas a little bit. One person that didn't play that much for them that's going to heat up is Malcolm Brogdon. He didn't really do too much that game, so when he gets in the rhythm, hell's going to break loose. Um, I definitely think they'll still won. This New York and Cleveland series, if Darius Garland can, can get in the rhythm, he might have a series that go to six. Um, you're taking Julius Randle off of him missing so many games, but he's got to get his feet under him. And once he do, he does that, I think now he's going to cause more problems for Cleveland. Like Cleveland do have a lot of those bigs. And Jared Allen and Evan, Evan Mobley, so they're going to cause issues already. But uh, I think that for, one, for them to steal a game in Cleveland, and then they do have the chance to close it out in five, maybe six. But Garland has to play better. I mean, it's just that, that cut and dry. If he plays better, I think they'll be solid. Donovan Mitchell's going to be Donovan Mitchell. Like, that's not going to change. Um, he's going to get his points. Uh, Karis LeVert is also a person that can make an impact, too. Uh, but being the fact that the Knicks just – R.J. Barrett had a hell of a game. And I don't know like, how often like he's going to have those games. Like, you know, that's one of those, yeah, I showed up for a game. Um, I didn't see him again until game five, game six. Uh, but we'll see if the Knicks can go into their depth, into their roster uh, quickly. Really didn't do too much. Expect more from him. But I definitely see the game going to probably game five or game six. And the best game on that on Saturday was Golden State and Sacramento. De'Aaron Fox just turned it to a different level third uh, in the third quarter. Um, it, 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 it seems like this team, this battle uh, of teams in, in California is going to be one to watch. It seems as if uh, both teams are equally matched. I mean, we're used to seeing Golden State 
make it rain from three point land and just not miss. But hell, we seen Malik Monk go off, De'Aaron Fox go off uh, this game as well, and they fought back. You know, Golden State had you know had had basically was leading for a minute, and then Sacramento, you know, came back and believe Mike Brown had plenty of faster pace. And they made it very interesting. So, uh, Sabonis has to play a hell of a lot better, too. I believe you texted me between that game and Sabonis just kind of wasn't there. Yeah. I mean, it, kinda, it, it just seemed as if Draymond and Kevin Looney had the straps on them. So, uh, but that, that series, I believe that series goes to seven. Ooh. Um, the reason why I say that is I think that Mike Brown has his team believe. Um, I, find it hard to believe that this team loses game two at home. I just don't see that. Um, so for me, I think that they get those two. Would it be shocked if they steal a game and go to state? That's the key. Uh, that's the that, and that's the main key. Now, if that happens, hell, we probably it might not go to seven, but if that happens, but um, you know the history of Golden State and how they play away. Now, what can what can kill all that or make this series end a little quicker than seven is Andrew Wiggins. He had a game. This team looks totally different. Andrew Wiggins. They just look like a different team. He he plays a huge part for them. Um, him on the minutes restriction, he I believe he had like four blocks, and he had a hell of a had a, had a hell of a game. Off a of minute restriction, so I think the longer that this series goes, the deeper, like the it might more it might be a bigger issue for um, Sacramento because now you're getting Wiggins more involved. You're getting that rotation handled a lot better for Golden State. But all in all, I think that that is clearly the best series uh, to watch. Um, Steph is being Steph at the right time. Um, I don't know what the hell he was doing at that last play. It kind of threw me off because it seems like he, it seems like he knew he had that three point shot, and he was just so confident that it just felt like a layup, and that kind of looked like how he shot it, like he kind of shot it as if it was a layup, not to his feet, you know, playing and shoot. Uh, so, or maybe he thought that he didn't have that time, or, or it just seemed like something was off that like, in the last few seconds. So, uh, but all in all. That series alone, that's going to be one to watch. I hope, I really hope that goes to seven. For me, the Philly series against Brooklyn, I think, I mean, Brooklyn could win one, but Philly could easily sweep. And, It seems like Mikael Bridges is like the only one that really showed up. I know Cam Johnson had 18 points. Spencer Dinwiddie seemed to have him a B for Kyle Kuzma. And, you know, you and you got to be focused in your situation right now. And, you know, Spencer didn't play his best game. Let's be real about that. And you look at the bench. One person with double figures is Seth, uh, Seth Curry. Other than that, oh, I know who can give you good offensive production. His name is Cam Thomas. And yep. Cam Thomas only played four minutes and scrub minutes. And this is the same Cam Thomas that Jock Vaughn, and his predecessor Steve Nash didn't want to didn't play for consecutive games for reasons I don't know why. This same Cam Thomas D Lock that put up forty points in three straight games, I believe, and put like another forty point game towards the end of the year. You need scoring. You can't depend on Bridges to do all the scoring. Then Willie. I mean, he could surprise you with a 30-point game, but 
right now, actually the past couple of seasons, it, it, it ain't really been there for him. Let's just be real about that. You know, Cam Johnson, he's good for between 10 and 18. Let's be real about that. And Dolphin and Smith, he's there just for free, uh, for defense. Other than that, you look at the bench. Seth Curry, I mean, he can, if he's on, he's on. But, you know, he can be one of those dudes, when his con- current contract goes up, he'd be on the bench getting very minimal. Other than that, I mean, I'm, I'm looking. Rose O'Neal had played 28 minutes, 4 points, 6 assists. 0 for 3 for 3-point land. That's not going to get done. Your bigs are not scoring. If you're Brooklyn. You know, Claxton only had five points. Sharp. I'm glad again giving him more minutes, but six points for him. You, you got to find some scoring. And Jock Vaughn got a guy on his bench that can give him some scoring, but it's like he's hot and cold on him. And I said on, on Twitter, on our show account, if if you're Cam Thomas and his agent, you gotta find a way to get out of get out of Brooklyn. And I think you've kind of shown enough to have some team kind of trade for you. I mean, at, at worst, he should be like a high level six man for your team, scoring wise. A good microwave guy. And some reason number Brooklyn. I don't know what Shaq Vaughn's thinking on it. Philly played great. Joel and B played pretty well. James Harden played pretty well as well. Uh, it's just that lack of depth at center at times. I feel that that always kind of concern me, but they played well. I, I think I think they're gonna sweep the Nets. I think Bridges he's gonna have a show out case for him. To kind of show what he's going to look like next year. Kind of be like a leading scorer type. But I just think in Philly's going to be too much for them. Especially down low. Uh, Hawks and Celtics. Watching that game, D-Law. It, it, the way the Celtics kind of came out and just took out the Hawks. Kind of took me out the game. Like, damn. And you, sometimes, you know, when a game's like a blowout early. It's kind of like the game feels dry and all that stuff. And Trey Young didn't have his best game. Downton Murray, granted he had 24 points, 0 for 6 for 3 point land. Bogdanovich, 9 points. CD Bay didn't play very well as well. Clint Capella, no double double. Danger Hunter, it's just bad all around. You know, uh, Jalen Brown, great game for him, 29-12. Nothing more you can ask for. He really took a, a certainness and took charge in that game. Uh, good uh, energy and minutes from Robert Williams. He played very well off the bench for the uh, Celtics Saturday. Great job by him. You know, Tatum, 25-11 rebounds. Great job by him as well. And I think, you know, yeah, they just keep this up. You know, Derek Wright, you know, he had 24 points. It just keep this up. You know, contain, you know, Young and Murray for the most part. Don't let nobody else get off. I think I think Boston could sweep the Hawks as well. You know, granted, Atlanta may sneak a sneaky game in uh, in uh, in the A, but, I mean, it won't surprise me if the Celtics, you know, just mop the floor with the Celtics. I mean, the Celtics mop the uh, floor with the Hawks. So, I, I look at there. The Knicks. Shout out to the Knicks. Jalen Brunson, 27 points. Great job by him in 30 minutes, uh, mind you. Josh Hart, very. Uh, I think he was very key. 17 points and 10 rebounds for him. I think his play really kind of helped push the Knicks into the win. Uh, 
RJ Barrett played pretty well. I gotta see some more score for him at that game. At, you know, next game. You know, Julius Randle. Good to see he have double digits in the rebound column. And like you alluded to, you know, getting his legs under him after missing all the time. But this, I just kind of wish he wouldn't take so much three pointers. You know. I know you got a different matchup with you know playing the Bigs in Cleveland with Mobley against Mobley Allen, Okoro, Dean Wade, Osmond, but still, drive the lane, make those guys move their feet and stuff, man. Don't let those big guys lax. Don't drive the paint. You got the ability to do it. Just take advantage of it. I think I think if the Cavaliers gonna win the series. D lock. I think Mobley got to play a little bit better, especially scoring wise. He got to score the ball better. You know, the kind of help. You know, Garland and Mitchell. He's got to score better. Uh, Levert. He's got to score as well. Just three points for him. That's not gonna, that's not gonna cut it at all against the Knicks. So I got to see more production out of him. Like you alluded to, I think this one of those series that can go to seven. But with the Knicks kind of sneaking a win in Cleveland, you know, and they get them in that New York crowd, uh, we'll see how things shake out, you know, for the Cavaliers. And then I think the game on Saturday night was the Kings and Warriors. We te- when we're texting back and forth, Yesterday, it, it wasn't like Sabonis were playing bad. It's, you know, he was rebounding and stuff like that, and you know, with his bad hand injury and stuff like that. It's just like when he got those rebounds, you know, especially on the offensive rebounds. You know, it's just like, man, go up with it, man. And, and that's one thing I think the Kings got the advantage on is just like the size. Like, come on, Sabonis get the rebound. He's six eleven, six seven foot. Man, go up and jump hook that. Looney's about 6'8", 6'9". Skyhook him. Draymond, 6'6". Skyhook him. You know, Kamiga, 6'9". Skyhook him. I, I was like, he got to be consistent and strong down low if they're going to have a chance in the series. I think, you know, he's the key to winning that series. That, like, like you alluded to, De'Aaron Fox played great. Very well. But can he keep that up? You got a great game at Malik Monk. And he was getting anything he want driving the lane. You know, I want to shout out to the chat real quick. Shout out to Marcus. Los great shout out to Terry Rodriguez. You know, Terry Rodriguez saying, D-Log, you know, the Kings might be lovable underdog that people want, want to see win. They're pretty... Pretty fun to watch, but you never count out Steph, Steph and Clay. That, that could be true. But I posed the question to you on the chat, and now y'all in the chat. With the Warriors' uh, road record this year, can they can they win on the road? That's a valid question. You know, can they win on the road? I guess Sacramento, a team that ain't been in the playoffs since since I. Graduated high school, and that's 2006. That's like I think Ron Artes, Ron Artes, lone year in Sacramento, I believe. That crew, you know. So, I, I, they played great. The Kings did great scoring from Malik Monk. You know, just got to keep that effort going. I'm, first time in the playoffs for a lot of these guys, they got to just keep it going. Mike Brown, a veteran coach, got to keep it going. You know, I look at the Warriors side of things. I think this is where not having a developed big is kind of going to bite them in the ass. They may, they may love Kevon Looney, but... And what he does, but you need something else down there. And I know Steve Kerr in the past 
when he was in Phoenix, you know, he kind of thought his big man as garbage man and kind of have that guard system when he was like the GM for the Suns. I remember he saying that in an interview a while back. But still, you still got to have a big down there. And, you know, Looney ain't there. He's, he's good for what he is. You know, Draymond's good for what he is. After that, d you got Kaminga, but he's more of a tween and forward. Wiggins, same thing. After that, I mean, you got Jamaka Green, but, you know, he's he's a small five, and they don't and they play him in spots. But if, if Sacramento, I mean, series could go to seven. But if, Sac- if Sacramento can at least squeak out a victory in the Bay Area, and I think the series cooked for the Warriors. They're not repeating. If they can at least got one win in Golden or San Francisco, they can win this series. Because the, the Warriors, they struggle on the, war, on the road this year. And I know Sacramento, between the distance between Sacramento, Oakland, San Francisco area, not too far off from each other. I, I, I understand that. So you ain't really got to travel that far. But, you know, this kind of a weird season that they really haven't run, uh, won the road much. Game two will be real telling what happens there. If the Warriors win, we may be singing a different tune come next Sunday. But if Sacramento wins game two, sneaks in a victory in game three or game four, Chef's kiss. You may have to chalk it up and give it to the Kings in that series. I mean, to be honest with you, I think that the team that we are used to uh, watching the Warriors just they didn't look bad yesterday. No, they didn't. They're going to get they, they're gonna get into that rhythm, but I don't think Sacramento is a pushover. I think people are going into looking at this series. I'm pretty sure they heard, oh, well, you know, Golden State will beat them and move on. They heard that the Lakers were popular. They would be a good matchup if they go against Sacramento first round. Like, these are the things that I'm pretty sure they've been hearing. Um, so I don't think that this is going to be a – uh, easy series for the Warriors. I think there's going to be one that they're going to have to work for. But they are looking at a team. They are playing a team that is, that is they're young, but they're clicking. They're playing pretty good. Um, yep. I definitely like you know what Malik Monk is bringing off the bench. Uh, that is a huge piece for them. Uh, Keegan Murray wasn't too much effective yesterday. I think he's going to play a bigger part tomorrow. So I definitely expect to see the difference in that. But um, this team, clearly, teams are going after uh, a team like the Golden State Warriors. You win NBA Finals, you and four, clearly there are the teams that are going to be talked about. So, uh, for me, I think that this series is going to be, I, honestly, this is probably going to be the best series through this whole first round. Um, now, that, now that you know we're hearing the news about other players getting hurt, yeah. the series is going to be, that's interesting, but this one here is going to be one to watch for. Uh, but I do think, again, the Warriors, if this series, the farther this series goes, the better chance for the Warriors. Um, because Andrew Wiggins, uh, off of how he played yesterday, is going to play a major piece uh, for this for this team. And it's clearly showing that. So, uh like I said, it going to a game six, going to a game seven, I think that's better for Warriors. Um, not so good for uh, the Kings. But it just, like I said, it just looking at it, I think they had them under, roughly under 30 minutes yesterday for Andrew Wiggins. 17 points, three rebounds, and four blocks. So 
you know, once he gets north of 30, 30 minutes, I think he's going to play a big part for them. Um, hell, things that De'Aaron Fox, Harrison Barnes are doing, the more that you use uh, Wiggins, I think it'll play you know, a bigger part. Because they're going to move him down to the four and play Draymond at the five. And clearly, Sabonis had a huge issue yesterday uh, with him. So, like I said, I think that uh, the longer this goes, I think that the harder it is for the Warriors. But, I mean, I'm sorry, the Warriors, the Kings. But if the Kings can get this next win and still won in Golden State, this shit might be over in five. Man. Yep. Yep, and, and, that, and that's how I look at it, that, that series. It's going to be a fun series to watch. You know, it's going to be a very fun series to watch. Uh, you know, we had the incident with E40 getting kicked out. You know, I know Sacramento fan, you, you, you hadn't had a playoff home game in a while. But, you know, kind of chill out, you know, when guests at your house, you know. Just kind of, just don't overdo it. Now, we don't know what's said. You know, what was that about E40? Is it two E40? You know, was he pretty chill about it? Told the people, hey, chill out? Or do you like, he had like, had like a point, like, hey, I need to cut to it out. And then they had to kick him out. But just calm down, Sacramento fan. Just calm down. You know, don't do nothing crazy that, you know, that, pe- that other folks would talk about your fans. Like years ago. So just chill out right now. Just chill. Just chill. All that stuff. Going to Sunday's action, D-Lock. You know, I think a lot of good, interesting matchups. You know, you got the Clippers and the Suns going on right now. With the Clippers up by 10 against the Phoenix Suns. And our own Terry Brown Rodriguez, you know, he said on his show that, you know, without Paul George, or, you know, not being there, the Clippers, I mean, it could be a six-game series or so, five or six-game series. I, I, I said to him, like, on the sh- show, during the show, like, Kawhi Leonard, D-Lock, I think he, he at least gets you, he can get you two wins. Without Paul George. Where do you see this series going? Because since Durant being the forward Phoenix, they really haven't lost the game. Now, of course, they've been holding Durant out. Injuries, you know, beholding all that stuff. Right now, they're losing by 10. You know, granted, you know, they lose by 10. Westbrook has no points. He's over seven for the field. You know, 12 points for Eric Gordon. How do you see this series playing out in your eyes without Paul George in the fall for the Clippers? Uh, the thing I like about the Clippers, um, they have depth. Um, the thing about them is they do have a sense of different, you know, rotations that they, that they run. Um, I will. I mean, no one who did. No one Phoenix has so many pieces. You know, they have their big three. Uh, and the expectations is for this to just be, you know, going to game five. But I actually think this may go to six. Um, the fact that they have Eric Golden staying out standing right now. I'm not, I'm not sure how long that is going to last, but um, they have. Some defenders, uh, even without Paul George, is still being led by Kawhi Leonard. Um, those, you know, rest days that's over with, uh, you know, injury management, whatever the case, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're going to see the full Kawhi Leonard every day, every game. Um, and for me, I think that Russ is going to pick up that slight slack that. Uh, they're going to be missed. That he's going to he's going to pick up a lot of what Paul George. They're going to miss Paul George. Um, now, granted, we are talking about Russ, who is not one of the greatest shooters. 
but he's in a very good situation right now, being the fact that so much is not going to be depending on him. Um, you know, you got Terrence Mann, you got Eric Gordon, you got uh, Norman Powell, you got all these other guys that can come in and, and you know get some shots if they need it. So, uh, you know, being led by Kawhi Leonard, and then you got your Zubac who needs rest, you got Mason Plumlee. They got a good depth. Um, so I think that they're going to be fine. Um, now, what's going to happen is I think that Phoenix is going to have to dig very deep into their roster to stick with the Clippers because of ro- the rotation that they can get. Um, you're probably going to match up. You're probably going to throw bodies at, at Kevin Durant. So I see this as being more sort of a Devin Booker series. Um, him and DeAndre Ayton should kind of do what they want. But um, I think that if you get a full – Kawhi Leonard, there's no way that they only win one game. I just do not see that. Um, and that's pending on, you know, how, you know, Phoenix comes out. We know sometimes Chris Paul can definitely disappear <laughs> during the playoffs. So, uh, for me, I think that having a, a player that with the playoff experience and Kawhi, uh, Tyrone Lewis, your, your head coach, um, they got they 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 I think they can steal a couple a couple games. Um, I wouldn't rule out it going to Game Seven. Um, I just don't. I think it'll be over in six. Uh, but hell, the way it's going, I know it's only the second second uh second quarter. But hell, if, if the Clippers steal Game One, um, you know, we might might be looking at it seven <laughs> going to Game Seven. Um, Right now, it looks like Russ is already shooting bad, so he's gonna he's gonna have one of those games where he's shooting pretty good. That's gonna happen. Um, now, I think with Russ being on the court, he's gonna tire out, you know, Chris Paul. That's gonna happen, um, you know. And I don't think the last time I think Chris Paul had a big issue with a point guard during the playoffs was at Steph Curry. So this is gonna be somebody that's gonna challenge him, you know, a hell of a lot. So for me. Uh, I think that the Clippers is a this is a very good sneaky first matchup. Um, there's a, every series there's literally every series in the first round there are, are uh, is good great matchups. All one you possibly can say is probably going to be a full out series is possibly the Brooklyn, the Brooklyn and Philly. Um, but to your point, if they let's try to put Cam Thomas in there a little bit more. We might be looking at you know maybe a, a game or two. That they might get, but for me, uh, Clippers and Phoenix could be a Western Conference Finals preview, but we just seen it the first round. Um, so, I, like I said, I think that uh, Paul George is a huge piece, but don't forget what Paul George turns into during the playoffs. So, it could be a blessing in the sky that he's not playing right now. Um, so, but getting pieces like an Eric Gord, um, I think that is a hell of a pickup. Bonus high. You got some guys up here that can match up with Phoenix pretty well. So the missing piece is going to be a Kevin Durant, you know. So, uh, but I definitely, there's no way I, I don't see the Clippers only winning one game. I just don't see that. Uh, real quick for me, uh, you know, I think the Clippers, I think I, like I alluded to, I think Clippers win two, at least two games. Kawhi will get you two games. If they sneak out this one, then we sing it. I mean, we sing a different tune. But I think the Suns went out in six. You know, and t- and, and Mr. Rodriguez saying Paul George might not be available for the whole series with Paul George playing in Clippers in seven without Paul probably Suns in six. So I I just think I, I think. Uh, I, I think, you know, it's really hard to gauge with Paul George out. But give me the Suns in six, though, in this series. You know, right now, Clippers are still up by 10, 55 45. Uh, left, uh, 131 left in the second quarter. So we'll see how the rest of the game uh, plays out. Lakers, Grizzlies, what are your thoughts on that? On that matchup? And could the Lakers upset the Grizzlies? In the first round matchup. Well, this game, this 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 might be a sweep, ladies and gents. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I mean, this is even with John Morant playing. Um, now John Morant looks like he's possibly going to be out. I think 
said it before. I said it when everybody was talking about how they just hope they were going to do it, how they're going to make it after day. This team keeps the damn playoffs. They're going to give anybody hell. This is probably the perfect matchup for the Lakers. You don't have Steven Allen. Now John Moran is hurt. Jaron Jackson is a hell of a player, but we know how he is when he gets in foul trouble. Um, this, honestly, this might be. I'll be I'll be nice to say it'd be a gentleman a gentleman seat. The reason why I say that is because without John Moran, we talked about it before. This team plays better without him. So they may, I think you'll see more of a Desmond Bain, Taj Jones, be Taj Jones. You might see a little bit more of Luke Kennard this next this next next round. But this is with Jaron Jackson playing how he played how he played today. I don't foresee that happening this whole series. At some point he's gonna get in foul trouble. And once he is in foul trouble, that game is over. They don't have any other bigs. David Tillman is pretty solid. You can't hold Anthony Davis. This series might be over in about four or five. And I like Memphis. I said it last year. I thought they were a talented team. They were too young. I like them this year. I think they're even better. But the problem is they're going against D'Angelo Russell, who played a hell of a game today. Austin Reeves, you already know what he did. That I, I don't see him have that type of game every every game, but very similar. Andy Davis and LeBron speaks on their own right there. And we didn't see that much from Dennis Schroeder. And we didn't see that much from Malik Beasley. Well, I haven't seen much from him since he's been on Lakers. Exactly. So he he's gonna he's gonna catch a heater eventually. So I like Memphis. Y'all asked for a hey, when he said he ain't worried about nobody in the West. He started that shit. So now he he got to go against one of the one of the talented teams in the West right now, first round. This series, I mean. Me calling it a agenda sweep is, is a reach, but I, I'm looking at what, for those that see, I'm pretty sure, did you see the hell Anthony Davis look like that first quarter? Yeah. If he plays like that, this might be over for realistically. Because ain't nobody going to stop him. And if he gets heated and they start double team, now you got to worry about, you know, who over there. So it, this might, I, like I said, be generous to say five. I like John Morant. I like this team. The Lakers are too much, man. In my mind. Real quick for me, I think, you know, t- on today's game, uh, Rui Huchamara, Austin Reeves, they played great, especially in that second half. Huchamara, Huchamara shot great from the outside. At one point, he had a six point swing by himself. Austin Reeves catch a fire, 14 points for him. You know, off the bit. I mean, in that fourth quarter, you know, great job by him. So you go need that production again. You know, Jerry Jackson played great for the Grizzlies. You know, down low and all that stuff, getting it buckets. You know, I kind of wish he just had a stronger rebounding game. But like, like I said, and you know, like you alluded to, it's like. If they can stay out of foul trouble, if he could, if he could stay out of foul trouble, keep his get fouls very limited. You know, Memphis, Memphis got a fighting chance. The John Morant injury is very concerning because he gives that team a different look. And yes, I don't know. What the status is, they say is in jeopardy. Yes, they got Ty Jones that could come and play pretty well, but you can't really depend on that. I ain't trying to be shade, throw shade to Ty Jones, but you really can't depend on that. You know, you can't depend on Dylan Brooks to have a great shooting night. You really can't depend on that. You know, Desmond Bain saying, you know, well, who tomorrow got lucky? Let me see him do it again. Why give somebody else? feeding material for the next game come Wednesday. You know? So, I, I really don't know. You know, for the Lakers, uh, real quick, uh, 
Darvin Ham had to give Lonnie Walker a look. Because Beasley and Troy Brown, when they get the open shots, they really don't take advantage of them. I forgot they had him. I haven't seen him playing so damn long. And it's like Darvin Ham got the new guys and kind of like ne- neglected Lonnie Walker. But, you know, over time, though, it's like Malik Beasley, Beasley really hadn't found that stroke yet. Troy Brown, same boat. I mean, he hadn't really found that stroke. So, you know, lucky for them, Austin Reeves has kind of really caught fire in the second half of the year. But you need somebody else. And I think Malik Beasley should be that. I mean, not Malik Beasley, but Lonnie Walker should be getting that chance. You know, next game, give him Lonnie Walker those 10 minutes, see what he does. You know, see what Lonnie Walker can bring to the table. Because you, you can't continue to depend on Malik Beasley to catch fire. You, you can't do that. You're in the playoffs, you can't depend on that. And I kind of wish Darwin had kind of did something like did something earlier at the end of the season to kind of do something to shake up that rotation. But having said all that, if everybody stay healthy and starting to line up Davis, James, Russell, Reese, I think they'd be solid. You know, I don't know. Well, like I said, we don't know John Morant's status for game two. It's, I mean, they say it's very doubtful, but who, who knows? But we'll, we'll see what happens there. And then real quick, D-Lock, before we get out of here, your thoughts on the Bucks loss to the Heat with Giannis going out with a back injury. What are your thoughts on how that series might go with Giannis being out? Wow. Um, I honestly think that Chris Middleton is going to have to step up. He actually played pretty well today. Uh, you, you're going to need to see a lot from him. Uh, but knowing what, now granted, I actually just got that notification. I'm almost positive that you got this well. How he'll expect to miss a month, at least. So, you know, you have two missing pieces uh, between both teams. You know, you're looking at Giannis. You don't know for sure how long he's going to be out, but Missing a Tyler Hero more for Jimmy Butler to be Jimmy Buckets. Um, I think this series is going to change, but to think about this, this is the reason why they went and got the extra pieces that they got. You know, well, this is this is going to play a part in that. You went and got a Jay Crowder who's been waiting to play for somebody. You got a Joe Ingles who can come in and, and make the shots when you get your three points in if you need it. So they have the depth to, to, to you know, recover a little bit of what Giannis uh, brings to the table. Uh, but now, you know, Bobby Portis is going to have to step up. Bruce Lopez is going to have to play a hell of a lot better. But I think the offense is going to lean a lot more on Chris Middleton. Um, what we've seen from him was a great, a good sign today for them, just because now they can see him giving him the full load, which I believe is the first game he played. He didn't have a minutes restriction. Now you have him to come in. He's going to have to play a lot. He's going to have to play a, a, a hell of a lot better. Uh, continue to, to play that role. Uh, Drew Holiday, same thing. So now you're going to have to see a big piece in it now. I think Jay Crowder minutes is going to definitely go up now. They're going to need that defender to go against the Jimmy Butler. So I think his former teammate, Jay Crowder, is going to play a big piece in that. But uh, I, missing an MVP candidate on your team definitely makes a difference. Um, I believe, you know, when we see a team – in the play-in tournament, get to the playoffs, we always think that, okay, well, they're going to go against the number one and two seed and get swept. That's not going to happen with Miami. Miami is not your ordinary play-in team, to be honest, um, being the fact that they just recently were in the NBA Finals. So I think that we're looking at we're looking at a series right now, definitely, especially with Giannis being out. Uh, this is going to be a series – that is definitely going to go a little bit farther than they hoped, I'm pretty sure, from Milwaukee. Um, now, granted, depending on how bad this injury is, uh, I think that 
it may not be a good thing for the series to continue to go for Milwaukee because you want to give Giannis that rest to recover. So um, their best bet, you know, they went in five, but right now Miami's already they've already stole a game in Milwaukee, and we know how it goes when they get in Miami. So. Um, Man, this is one of those again. Like I said earlier about the about about the Phoenix and and, and and Clippers series. You have a series this first round that clearly could be an Eastern Conference series final in Miami and Milwaukee. So I think that we're going to see a hell of a, a hell of a lot more difference with bigger bigger injury issue for both teams. With Giannis being out, it definitely is. I don't think this is going to five. I think this is probably going to six. There's a good chance it may go to seven. Yeah, just real quick for me, I think we'll, if, we'll see how long Giannis will be out. But if he's out for an extended period of time, then, I mean, you're looking at potentially a seven-game series, you know, for these two teams, and it could go either way. You know, Tyre Hero being out, that helps that depth in the, uh, for the Miami. So, you know... Yeah, they lost Giannis, but they lost Tyler Hero in that scoring as well. So, I mean, losing Giannis is a greater, greater variable. But for Miami using Tyler Hero, that sucks as well. So, I mean, we interested to see how this this series shakes out. You know, I I think Milwaukee still pulls it through, but I think it'll be probably it'll be in seven games, but. If Jimmy Butler could stay healthy, I, the momentum could go Miami's way. And, you know, Miami's smelling blood in the water. If Giannis going to be out, then you better, you better strike hot right now. And Jimmy Butler better turn on the Jets. Bam Adebayo better play his best damn ball. And Miami could make the upset. But it all depends on how long Giannis going to be out. And we'll see, you know, how that plays out for the uh, Bucks. But I'll let you have the final word. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that now you're going to have to see Drew step up. Now we're going to see more of Victor Oladipo on the Miami end with Tyler Hero being out. Uh, Gabe Vincent. These guys are going to have to come and play, play a huge part. Uh, but they have shooters. So we're going to see what this does for the Miami side. As far as Milwaukee, um, I need to see, you know, we'll get more news, I'm sure, on Giannis. But now, you know, we remember seeing Jay Crowder sitting at home, basically not wanting to play for Phoenix at all, waiting to get a chance. Now he is going to have his chance. Um, and he's going to have to play a huge part playing against his former teammate, Jimmy Butler, because now they're going to need to maintain or contain him because once he gets hot, it seems like everybody else starts to cook. So, uh, right now, I think that series is going to be one to watch. Also, this, the, all these series are going to be great. Um, but now, you take out an MVP candidate. Uh, Drew Holiday is going to have to step up. Chris Middleton um, is going to have to step up. You know, those games where it was injury management, like, you don't have time for those now anymore. The playoffs are now, every game counts. And now, specifically for Milwaukee, you're 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 down. You're you lost the game, the uh, home court advantage. Yep. So now, these now your games are twice as important. Um, again, I think that they they're gonna have to do something this next game. I don't think Giannis plays this next game. If he don't, I because I think this is probably right now this is probably the most important game of the series already. Like if he don't play this game, that tells you how serious this injury is. Uh, so, uh, for me, I think we're going to have to see the other two step up. Um, and you know, Javon Carter's going to have to come and play a role. Bobby Porter seems to play pretty decent. But now they're going to have to adjust. This is not like the Memphis Grizzlies, who we've seen play a hell of a lot better without John Moran. We haven't seen that yet with, with Milwaukee without Giannis. And they're going to have, possibly going to have to do that. So, if Giannis does not play, I expect for Chris Middleton to have one of those games. So, lots of things to keep up with. 
in the playoffs. A lot of injuries, a lot of things that could happen. It seems like the title's up for grabs in our in our eyes. So we'll see how things shake out in the, in the you know this week and how we're gonna how we're gonna come out next Sunday. Uh, we're gonna push back the Mikey Williams um, his arrest and that issue there. Uh, hopefully the next week if more information comes out. So we're gonna push it to next week. I, I think we got we gotta get a deep dive on that one because it's just just dumb for what he did. But D Lock, how can people find you on social media? You gotta find me at Black Dash eight one three. Uh definitely be drafting the NFL drafts coming up. So with the NBA playoffs going on, that's gonna be the main focus. Um but I will be tapping to the draft every now and then seeing what's going on. But right now with more news with these players, you'll be seeing me retweet and say a lot of different things that have different opinions on the playoffs. What more ever find you at from the the show paid. You can follow the show at Fast Break at ISR. That's Fast Break I E S R on Twitter. You can follow I Sports Radio on all social media platforms. Also, do follow iSportsRadio.com for your latest shows, news, and feed. The NFL draft is coming around the corner. So, a lot of news and shows talking about the NFL draft leading up to that. And also, the NFL draft contest hosted by one Mike Pat. So, do follow him on Twitter at Mike Pat. Uh, I think he changed 2800, but Mike Pat on Twitter. Give you all the uh, news and rules for our NFL draft contest here in a couple weeks. Also, I do have a, a Twitter account myself uh, at Spawn 4288. That is Spawn 4288. I do another show on the time called a Crooks Process. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok as well. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, we'll talk to y'all next week. Playoffs in full swing. Like I said, we're pushing back to Mike Williams' um, deal next week. With more information coming out. Playoffs this week. We'll see if y'all favorite teams can make a break this season uh, this week until next Sunday. Until then, we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.